Okay. So it will be today we'll be having Captain Joshua, um, one of the men I respect in the mining industry, also taking us on this risk assessment as well. And like I said, it's going to be giving us practical ways on how we fill up a risk assessment and what it entails. So with that, I will say so the floor is the floor is open, uh, Captain Joshua. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Captain Afolabi and uh, uh, Bishop on the mountain. No, no budget Bishop. Uh, can you hear me? And can you all see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to build up on what Captain Afolabi taught us last week. He laid a foundation on what is risk assessment. And uh, I think we have some guys that were here with us last time. Someone give me a quick definition of a risk assessment. Omar, I think you were here. JJ. And uh, you were here as well. And someone, one of you, Give me a quick definition of assessment, risk assessment. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Good evening, yes, 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 I can hear you. I'm having issues with my name. Good evening, Captain. Um, risk assessment is the careful examination of the nature of the job, which can cause potential harm, taking precautionary measures to eliminate or reduce the harm. Very good. I uh, would prefer you to use hazard in that uh, aspect, not uh, I prefer hazard. Uh, and uh, last week we talked about what is hazard. All right. Just like what you have seen on my screen, uh, hazard is a source of potential harm or damage, or a situation with potential for harm or damage, which means it's, it's anything that can cause harm, anything that can cause damage, or situation that may arise that may result into damage or into harm. So what do we know as risk? A definition of risk. Definition is the likelihood that a hazard may occur. So everything about risk assessment is just harm, potential harm or damage. And uh, how do you how we can mitigate? Just as the definition of risk assessment says, how we can mitigate or eradicate. If you cannot eradicate, you can mitigate, which means reducing the uh, harm or reducing the effect of the harm on you. So, for today, we'll continue. At the end of the day, we will we'll have a class activity where we can prepare. We we'll have to prepare a risk assessment. So. Under risk assessment, we have some questions to ask. Number one, is there a source of harm? Who or what could have been harmed? How could the harm occur? So let me let, describe the first one, which is, is there a source of harm? I give you an example. You want to plug the, uh, you want to pour, plug a boiler ring to a power stop. Is that a source of harm? Is the power stop a source of harm? Yes, it is. What can happen? Or 
who could be harmed or what can be harmed. You as a person, you plugging the boiler ring can be harmed. Two, the boiler ring can get harmed because the boiler ring is 220 volts. So the source of the arm, the source of the uh, power, is it 220? Is it 440? You need to know. If it is 440, you can plug the uh, boiler ring and it get blown because the boiler ring is 220 volts. And number two, you are reporting the responsibility of electrical shock. So you need to do a proper risk assessment on your own. That is not a documented risk assessment. That is on screen. You just do the risk assessment. So number one, is there a source of arm? Yes. If it, if it is yes, you seek. Number two, who or what could be harmed? Number three, how could the harm occur? So, just like the previous, uh, last week we show you this situation that occurred. So, if we are to bring in this situation, the three uh, questions, under this situation, the three questions we have just now, we have Is there a source of harm? Who or what could cause harm? Who or what could be harmed? How could harm occur? So let's take this as an example. Okay, can you all see my screen? Hello? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. From this picture we have here, number one question. Is there any cause of harm here in this operation? Yes, there is. There is. Can you give me one of the examples of the harm that you can see here? This is how the risk the assessment. container happens. cross. Okay, that is a falling container. That is correct. Another yes. arm. I will call that falling object. Okay. What other arm can you see in this situation? Uh, I can see harm of trip and fall. Trip and fall, okay. What other arm? What else can we see? I think basically this is the only harm. This is the only harm that we've seen. Okay, very good. This is the only harm you can see. You talk about falling object, trip and fall. Did you uh, talk about the uh, being trapped in between objects because there's possibility that this uh, container is to be dropped beside on the beside this uh, container here so there's possibility that the, the guy can be trapped so we are not only talking about trip or falling objects we are talking about being trapped and what you saw now the man the the pi the IP here is trapped under the container. So we have to look at that. So now we we have three as of now. Okay. We now move to number two, which is who 
or what can get harmed. So in this situation, who or what can get harmed? I want the answer from the victim from us, please. Yeah, the victim himself uh, is uh, liable to. I said the victim that is lying there is uh, the person that is in uh, the line of fire that have the risk to be harmed. Very good. So in this case, is the uh, either the victim door. Correct? JJ? Yes, sir. Very good. But we only talk about the first thing here. You know, it is who and what can get harm. Also, when you look at the container that is, top, that is below, you can see the container is spread. We don't know what is inside. So at the same time, the container is also what? It also has arm. It's not only to person. Because uh, under risk assessment, we are talking about person. We are talking about environment. We're talking about business. We're talking about the vessel himself. So in this case, what can get arm? Who and what? We are talking here about the person one. Number two, the container. Number three, we talk about the business. Because as this incident happened now, everything we have to stop is going to affect the business himself. They have to stop, start making investigation, get in touch with the uh, family of the IP. That is the injured person. In this case now, it's not an injured person, it's disease. So family, business is affected. And also number four, vessel himself, which is a... Uh, uh, we we don't call it just this. We call it the. Let me to remember. Okay, I will get back to you. The vessel itself is affected, but there will be so many, so much investigation on it. So. When we are talking about risk assessment, we are not only talking about the person involved below. We are also talking about so many factors. I remember when I was working with Mobile, with the ROV team, one of the ROV guys caught his finger with a knife while in operation. It took one month for that investigation. The vessel was brought to an air and we are tanker. Yes, the IP person was treated. Risk assessment where it was checked that uh, the job he undertook was there risk assessment. There was yes, it was documented. Everybody signed. But the, when the investigation started, the vessel was in hotel for one month for investigation. Thereby, this is affecting business. So the IP person himself, which is working, is affected. Business is affected. So we have to put that into consideration as well, not just the person alone. So what would cause harm in this situation, which is the third question? Omar. Okay. Is it, okay, yes, sir. Omar, what would cause harm in this situation? The container. The container. Very good. I want us to take note of those three important questions. In any risk assessment you want to do, you have to put those three questions, you have to put it in mind. Number one, is there a source of harm? Yes or no? Who or what will be harmed? and what would cause the harm. I will show you some pictures now. I see uh, you see what went wrong and those three questions we answer. Okay, can you see this thing? 
Are you serious? No, sir. It's black, sir. Oh, we're not seeing anything yet. Uh, yeah. Up now. Still blank. Still Are blank. Now? No. no. Still blank. Still blank. Oh. After this, if you can tell me the picture you're trying to project, I can um, share it. Okay, the one the the ABs on forward station are pulling the line. Okay. Is it the, the one, the casualty? Matrix? Negative. Negative. Okay, I'm coming, sure. That is the second picture. Okay, on the risk assessment. That's enough for lobby. Yeah, I'm coming now. Um, I just want to get better network and the UK. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I just got it too. <laughs> okay, can you see it now? As started the picture. Hello, can everybody see my screen? Okay, correct. Yeah, we can see it now. Yeah. 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 You can see it now, right? Yes, yes, okay. we can see it Thank now. You, Thank you, Dr. Kolabi. Thank you, Dr. Kolabi. So, from here, what can you... Number one question. Can you bring out uh, anything from the number one question here? What's Do good? we remember the question? What? What is who, who is, is there? Any, is there okay. any hazard? Is there any hazard? Is there a source of harm? Oh, what would cause harm? Is there a source of harm in this okay. picture? Yes, it, there is. Snap back. Example of harm, please. The rope. That is parting of the rope, right? Yes. And the, the and the not, not just the rope. Okay. What? They can get the, the rope can tangle their legs, thereby leading to entanglement of their legs and okay. tangle of the rope. Very good. Which can result into what? Three pounds, right? Yes, they can to trip and fall. They can also yeah. lose footing and fall. Mm. He's using his strength mm. to run the line. Now they don't have to cover. If tension comes now, mm. it will drop. Yeah. The best thing is to put more time than you lift it. Yes. What is happening there? Patrick, I can't hear you. Line like this. You put it down, then you leave it. I don't want really to ask me a question. It's in the network. Patrick, are you, who is talking, please? I want to be well audible. Hello? Hello, I think it's Patrick guys talking. Patrick, are you saying something so we can all learn from you? Yeah, you are Patrick now. Yes. Uh -huh. Hello. Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, please, can you? Yeah, can yeah. you repeat the question, please? So the, the question topic. is, what, what, can you mention some other there? I mean, soft. <laughs> The hazard involved. So the two of them, they are hazard to each other. The two of them are hazard, the rope and so, the bit behind them and the deck as well. Hello, can you okay. hear me, sir? 
But that's not, I can hear you, but that's not really a source of hazard. Okay. No, like the two of them, they might collide. They might collide. They might collide. Okay, they might collide. That is the source of hazard. Hazard, you are correct. You are correct about that. So what other hazard can you see here? The ruler. The ruler behind the second person. What happened to the ruler? What happened to the ruler? Ah, in this the, case, the other person like, might uh, hit himself to the ruler. Any, hmm. Tension. If there is a tension. Mm -hmm. But I can fall on the ruler, correct? Yeah, yeah, he, might hit the, he might be hit with the ruler. He might collide with the ruler. He might collide with the roller. Okay. Nobody is talking about small bar zone there. Nobody is talking about that. But about what? zone is not identifying that snap back zone. Have you heard about that before? Yes. Okay. And nobody is talking about the rope on the on, on the on the deck there. You can see how the rope is, is not properly placed. Yes, so that's what I said earlier, that they are less to be tangled or the rope can tangle their legs. That's the rope can tangle their legs, that's right. Yes, that's what I said earlier. 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 The rope on the deck. I think someone said that. Okay. So those are potential source of harm. Then who can be, who or what can be harmed in this situation? I believe the two guys, correct? Yes, the two guys. The two guys, very correct. And uh, number three, how could harm occur in this situation? Harm could occur by tension. Mm -hmm. By tension, tension. Tension on the line. Okay, I saw someone said uh, someone said bad posture, not bad training line. That's correct. Those three hazards are very very. Uh, That's not bad. They said it's correct. not classified under how how harm can occur and not the source of harm. But how could the harm occur? It can occur while they are pulling, they can fall. It's possible for them to be trapped by the line. And in this case, probably if there is a, uh, the, if the line part or anything, they are going to be picked up by the line. That's correct. That is under detention. They are going to be picked up by that line. And also, I saw, if you, if you see the guy in the trunk, you can see he's not wearing his... Uh, He's not wearing his glove. He's unglove. And we all see that. He's unglove. Yes, he's not wearing an glove. Can we also see that he's not wearing a safety goggle? I couldn't see the lady eyes properly, but for the guy, he's not wearing a safety goggle. So this shows clearly that. It's okay. This shows clearly that there is no risk assessment or the, there's no proper risk assessment for this operation. Hello? Can you hear me? Someone we can hear you. Bad network. I don't know if it's here. Okay, very good. So, Risk assessment continue. So hazard can be categorized into four examples by topic. Into examples by topic. We can talk about mechanical hazard, electrical hazard, physical radiation, substance, fire and explosion, chemical, biological and uh, physiological. 
Tak tahu pula ni. Yes sir. Can we go back to the slide please? Oh, should I share? Should I share? Yeah, you can. Sh you can share a screen from there. Okay. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so how that can be categorized? For, for example, by topic. So we can talk about mechanical hazard, electrical hazard, physical, radiation, substance, fire and explosion, chemical, biological, or physiological. Just like the pictures we showed the other time, uh, one of the hazards we, ne we did not oh, mention no, the last this, one was mechanical. It's possible. Hello? Can you follow me? Yeah, hello? I thought you were talking to me. That's fine. Okay. All right. So, just like the first example I, I talked about when we started, you want to boil, you want to throw the boiling ring to an electrical socket. So, the first hazard you think about today is electrical hazard. The picture we check, which is for the morning operation. So many things you can come up with there. The physical, you can talk about the elect the mechanical, which is operation of the winch. That so the operation of the winch. So it depends on the kind of operation you want to do. So when you are talking about identification of the hazard, you have to put all this into consideration. You have to consider mechanical part, electrical part, depending on what you want to do. So, uh, we go down to, during the work activities, what are the hazards that exist? We talk about slip and fall on the level, fall of protein from height, Fall of tools, material from height, inadequate headroom, in that inadequate ventilation. So, one of the uh, operations we want us to talk about today, specifically, I want us to talk about mowing operation, which is which is just one of the pictures we showed you the last one. So, in a mowing operation. We we'll talk about the hazard that we could see in that picture. One of them is slip and fall, right? We talked about slip and fall. We talked about the two uh, guys falling on each other, correct? Am I correct? Hello? That's very correct, sir. Yeah, we too. Okay. So those are one of the hazards that we, we talked about. Another hazard is the hazard from the plant and machinery, which may result in their destruction or loss of availability of essential equipment. Hazard from manual handling. Hazard from long time physiological effects, e.g., 
exposure to substances above the threshold limit value. So after we have identified all the risks involved in that operation, now we need to put the control. How do we control the risk? The most effective way to reduce the risk is to eliminate the hazard completely. In many cases, there is import, it, is, it is impossible for us to mitigate, to eliminate completely, but it is possible for us to reduce the harm or not. And that is why we have a TPE. If you cannot remove the hazard completely, then you can eliminate, you can reduce it. If you cannot eliminate it, you can reduce it. Just like the guy that was pulling without gloves, there is possibility that his hand crashed, the line crashed his hand. But if he should have a glove on his hand, that is going to reduce the impact. It's like you having a falling object while you are doing a uh, while you are doing cargo operation, and you have others on you. You know when the uh, object falls on you, accidentally, the impact will be lower compared to you not having others. I could remember there was the day I, I went into the engine room. I was at the Third engineer wearing Bob Shaw, uh, Bob Cap, yeah, Bob Cap. So he wanted to raise his head, then his head is he, 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 a pipe. Now let's assume there was, the, he wasn't wearing that Bob Cap. We can all assume the, the kind of impact he's going to have on his head. But with the Bob Cap, yes, the hazard is there. But with the Bob Cap, the impact of the hazard on him reduced. So if you cannot remove the hazard completely, you can put measures, a risk control that we can use to control the impact of the hazard. So now we, we, we talk about estimating risk. So how do we estimate the risk from, a, from an hazard in the point, uh, point of view of the risk assessment. We have A, the potential severity of harm. B, the likelihood that the harm may occur. Those two are very important. When the harm occurs, how severe is this going to be on you? If you have, if you if you have a trip hazard or a fall hazard, how severe is it going to be on you? And two, which is the second one, the likelihood that the harm may occur. I give an example now. During a morning operation, let me say SPS operation. Offshore or tanker to tanker, yes, tanker to tanker, the uh, SPS operation. Is there a likelihood of falling overboard? Very likely. Hello? Yes, there is, there is. Very, very likely. Very good. That is clear. Very likely. Now, still same operation, morning operation. Is there a likelihood? of a falling object. Uh, not likely. During, during STS? No, it's not likely. Yes. Wood of a falling object. No. There can be not wood, likely. there can be. But do you know it is likely? Because when you send, when the other aspect is sent, they are even like, it's a falling object. It's my fall on yes. the Yes, that's very so correct. That is also a falling object. So there is likelihood, but when that is where you have under the likelihood, you have one, two, three, four. It is run. So it's not determined 
what the the likelihood of falling overboard compared to the likelihood of a falling object, which one is more likely to ha to, ha to happen during a marine operation? Man overboard. They falling overboard. Man overboard. That is where that is where we have the category. We have. Okay, that is why we have very likely, likely, unlikely, and very unlikely. That is where we have the categories of likelihood of arm. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, from the screen you see category for the likelihood of arm. Very likely. Likely, unlikely, and very unlikely. I go to the uh, next one. Categories of severity of arm. We have slight arm, moderate arm, extreme arm. We also have health and under the category. We have the health and safety. So the example of falling overboard. What is the severity of the arm? Slight arm, moderate arm, or extreme arm? Extreme arm. Very extreme. If I have another thing, I can call very extreme. Because it can result into loss of life. And yes, during the morning operation, if the life, SMM, very good. If a life pack, what is the arm? Extreme as well, because when a life pack, anybody that the line is, so anything can happen to him. I think we have a, Dr. Flavi can bring up a picture of one of the incidents that happened short quite long. I think that was last year, if I'm not mistaken, on one of the matrix standards. That's yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to break it out now. Uh, you mean the STS okay. accident? Please do. Yeah. Yes, it's right sir. there on the screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can see. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So you can see the result of one of the incidents. In this case, this is extreme arm. The severity of this arm is very extreme. Amputation, injury, this is fatal injury. So so this is an example of severity of arm. So when doing your risk assessment, you have to put that into consideration, the severity of arm. And there's something we have a we call the risk exterminator. We call it risk, risk exterminator. Yes, that's correct. Are you still Estimator, yes. Risk estimator. This is like a graph bringing up unlikely and likely. What are we going to have? Green, yellow, and red. If you do a risk assessment and your estimator is along the red, that operation is to be cancelled completely. Can you all see my screen now? Affirmative. Yes, sir. Okay. You can see from the risk, as a, this is an example of risk estimator. We have low risk, very low risk, medium risk, 
highly and very, very highly. At the beginning of the risk assessment, it might be high, but we are expecting to have medium risk, low risk, or very low risk after we put measures to mitigate the hazard. But after putting the measure, and you still find out that the risk is still very high, my brother, that operation is to be aborted. You have to look for another way to carry out that operation. In as much the risk is still very high. In some companies under their risk assessment, even if it is still high risk, you still need to consult the office. You need to consult the, the your office before you carry out that operation. So, So from what we can see, you can see the determining what determine the tolerable of the risk. Very low risk is acceptable, low risk is tolerable, medium risk is a risk that should be reduced, high risk so that they they are tolerable or acceptable. Why very high risk is unacceptable. So it is possible you have unacceptable high risk and medium risk before you put the measures in place. But by the time you put the record, the, the measures in place, we are expected to have a low risk or very low risk. Anything more than that, you need to go do what you need to reassess the the the, the risk again. You need to go back to the drawing board. Look at how you can mitigate the risk. What's the main reason of the risk assessment? It's not just for you to see the risk. The reason for a risk assessment is for you to see one and take a precautionary measure to reduce the risk to the barest minimum if you cannot mitigate it, or if you cannot eradicate it completely. Okay, you try to mitigate. So if you now put the measures in place and still you cannot see mitigate and you cannot see eradicate, then that operation should not hold at all. It shows the risk is too high. It's not acceptable. So, very, very important for us, we need to consult um, our, we need to be familiar with our post -web. I think in uh, chapter one, uh, 1.2, we talked about risk assessment. There are five points. If we go on to the post web, you see those five points. Very, very important. If you go through it, who, who, is, who, who, who to do the risk assessment? <laughs> Who are who people that will do the risk assessment? Who, who is to be harmed? What are the things that will, that, that, that will be harmed? What is hazard? Everything is in there in post work. If you go through post work, you will see that every company that you work, they also have the, the risk assessment uh, form. We have to go through the risk assessment and on, on team risk assessment as well. So it's not just about we taking paper and signing, because that is what most investors do. And when you see how that happening, you'll be wondering, was there any risk assessment at all? Was there any risk assessment in place? So it is, risk assessment is not just a document for us to sign, no. It is something we have to go to the point you go to exactly where you want to do the operation. Check what are the risks you can find there. Discuss the risk. Look for a way to mitigate it. I think we spent 
uh, much time. This is 10 minutes to nine. So I want us to talk about prepare, they have to prepare a risk control action plan. Having determined the significant risk, decide what actions should be taken to improve safety, taking account of precautions and controls already in place. Controls will be chosen from the following in order of effectiveness. The first one is elimination. Can we eliminate this hazard completely? If there is no way, we move up, up to substitution. That is substitution by something less hazardous and risky. Number three, enclosure. That is enclose the hazard in a way that eliminates or controls the risk. Guiding, segregation of people. And uh, number five, safe system of work that reduce the risk to an acceptable level. So let's go back to our morning operation. By next week, our, there is no time. Captain uh, Afolabi? Yes, sir. Captain can we go on to uh, for the risk assessment? There is, do I still have some time? Yeah, but I think we can just uh, pick um, a job and then um, using the format, we just see how we can all identify hazard and look for ways to. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're going to make use of risk. We are going to make use of. Um, Morning operation. I think we have we've been talking about that from the beginning. I will want to pick someone. Omar. Yes, sir. Okay. You can see on the screen. Uh, but it's, that, it's somehow face? blurry. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether it's from my screen or from your screen, but it's somehow bloody to me. Uh, wait, let me just try to see how upload it from my side here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Captain Afo, greetings to everyone. I, I, I think we can try something. Eh? Um, every, all the students in the class should take one um, marine operation and come up with the risk assessment for next class. So someone can take uh, okay. cargo operation, someone can take marine, someone can take uh, engine room maintenance. Uh, that's, I, I'm even interested that the dead guy should take some, do some risk assessment of uh, engine room operation. So let's uh, do some creativity with this so that they are presenting it uh, next class. They are the ones uh, taking us through their risk assessment. What about that? I think that is the best. Oh, on the group, WhatsApp group, we're going to share a format, a risk assessment format that we can all use. So it's a matter of uh, asking people. So we have uh, uh, Umar, which senator, which one are you going to come up with next class? Which example are you going to come up with? I should, as in, I should just talk about any operation to work on. Please, please I'll uh, think, think about something. Okay, very good, very good. So I'd like us to see, I'd like to see the risk assessment you guys uh, come up with next week so that you will be the one to take us through your risk assessment from the beginning to the end. Everybody should have like maybe five, five minutes or, and we'll be able to ask questions and contribute to your risk assessments. Uh, while, um, sorry, Captain Josh, can I add a, a little one or two take points? Hundred percent, 
Okay, thank you, sir. Um, while we are here, I want us to know that in risk assessment, there's also a, an important point that is added now, which is has been there for some time, is reputation. So like uh, Captain Josh was saying, what can happen? The, the opposite about the business itself, the company involved, the reputation, if the news gets to hear about it, media, what are they going to say? You know, if somebody on LinkedIn finds out that there's something wrong and they will use your company to shine, the reputation, what about yourself involved in that operation? What's the reputation? Uh, if you lose that your job because of that, can you get another job somewhere else? Or your name will be involved. So your name is part of a uh, risk assessment. Uh, there's also this thing I see a lot of people, because the companies have generic risk assessment, right? And the, vest, the crew don't even do anything anymore. They just stick to that generic risk assessment. That's a very bad practice. So it's something that we need to understand the importance of risk assessment and see that the generic is just a guide. Eh? It's not the actual for the job we are doing on board. So we need to use that as a guide to build the actual. This thing comes to the experience. When you do risk assessment, the first one might not be so good, but your risk assessment, your risk assessment is the way you decide your risk. But so get involved. Don't say I'm a junior officer. Uh, I don't, is the chief officer alone that does assessment. No, you're responsible. There's a mental risk assessment. The fact that you're going to do a work tomorrow, you're already thinking about it. You know, so that's mental risk assessment. So, so please get involved. Don't rush it. Do it properly. Uh, it's better to take an extra five, 10 minutes to think about the risk than to use <laughs> two, three days to write reports when something goes wrong. I used to tell people that uh, when, they, when something happens on your ship, the worst question I, uh, I ate is they will say, Captain, what happened? You know, it's just three words, eh? Captain, what happened? You write time paper with or because of an accident that has occurred. When you finally submit that time paper, they will now reply you again and say, Captain, what really happened? You know, so <laughs> the the amount of pressure, the amount of work you do to close an accident is not worth it. Eh? Better to do a risk assessment properly. Thanks so much. So uh, Captain Josh, over to you. And I think we'll have more risk assessments uh, next yes. class. That's great. Thank you, sir. Bishop. Yeah, we can all hear what we heard in plenty. And also, I want to add up to what he said. Yes, you are third officer now. You are second officer now. You are cadet now. But tomorrow you'll be chief officer. Tomorrow you'll be captain. So we have to put that at the back of our mind that it is what we know now that we are going to build on. Most of the captains, most of the two of that we have now that are making this mistake, it all started while they were cadets. I do tell my cadets on board that, look, my friend, as a cadet, there are things I expect you to know now. So that when you are second mate, when you are chief mate, you build on that. But if you miss it from now, as of now you miss it, then it will be a very big problem for you when you become an officer. So uh, just like what Malda said, we need to get involved in the risk assessment on our vessel. One of the pictures that uh, I asked Captain Aflavi to put up, that is the one for the marine operation that there was an accident. Who are the people that were affected? It's not the captain, although his reputation will be there that he is the captain that was on board when such incident happened. But those guys on, at the morning station were the ones that were affected. So if you don't get involved, if you don't know the hazard that is applicable to where you work, at that point, when it happens, you will be affected. So the uh, captain can also be affected. Captain Afolabi? Definitely, just like what Captain uh, Lobosha Bishop said. He said, reputation. The reputation and psycho of the psychologically, the psychologically, the captain might be affected. Psychologically, I have, yes. I, have an experience, I have an experience regarding that. 
which I don't want to, I wouldn't want to talk about. <laughs> but today, it's still affecting. So, psychologically, it's going to affect the captain. But the guys that are in the line of fire are the ones that is affected most. The guy that died is gone, but the captain is still alive. He, he, might, not, he might not get another job, but he's alive. But if you are gone, you are gone. So please get involved in the risk assessment. It is very, very important. Captain Tayo, am I right? Yes, sir. Very well. Yeah, right. And um, and thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for the lecture. Uh, to be honest, that was that was really insightful as well. And I'm sure that everyone we are able to understand the gravity of not carrying out a proper risk assessment. And like I started in the day one to say that this is why, you know, examiners are really coming out to really check why, um, to really assess people on if they can carry out a risk assessment. The assignment from Captain Tyler, I would please like us to take it very, very seriously. Um, it was kind of a little different from what I had in mind, but I think that only we even make it look more visible to everyone um, as well. So please, let's let's go, let's pick up some um, some um, operations or some works that needs to be done. And then we identify every single um, other. And then even next week, we can have one or two pictures, which I and Captain Joshua will prepare down today. And then we'll just pick some, some hazard as well. But please, just let everybody just make this um, lecture a very, very important one as regards to risk assessment. Um, unfortunately, we had an accident was the last week, and we know what will have what will have happened if you know proper risk assessment was done and implemented. And this this is how it starts. It starts gradually to this to the point where you know safety is just thrown out of the window. So I'll look forward to seeing everybody next week. I'll look forward to see this risk assessment done by us so that we can even be more proud of being our officers. So we'll see again um, next week. I'll leave it to uh, Captain Tyre if Captain Tyre has anything to add. Uh, not at all, sir. Thanks for that. Thanks for the addition. All right, thanks, thanks everyone. And um, see you, see you next week.